Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to learn how to create a dynamic list based on a search of several different items and return just the items that contain those in our search list. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here's our scenario. In column B here, I have a list of 25 different menu items. And in column D, I have a table. And in that table are three different items, tofu, ginger, and pork. And in column F, I have a formula that will extract any of the items in column B that contain any of these words. So for example, the first and the second contain tofu, the third one contains pork, the fourth item contains ginger. And because this is a table, I can expand it, contract it, or change it, and it'll automatically adjust the range that lists the items that I want to pull into column F. So for example, if I want to change ginger to salad, I hit that, notice dynamically my range changes to anything that contains tofu, salad, and pork. Let's say I want to expand this down. Now notice when I do that, I now have a blank in my table. And since this is searching for blanks too, it basically pulls in every item. So I can't leave blank in my table. But when I expand that down, now I can add something else like leek. And now I have items that contain tofu, salad, pork, and leek. So... How did we accomplish this? Well, there's two primary formulas that we're going to go through, and I'll explain how they are used to create this scenario. So let's go over to Sheet 2, and we'll build our worksheet to create this dynamic extracted list. The first thing I want to do is create a table here. So I'm just going to enter a couple items here, pork, salad, and tofu, and... I'm going to select that, use my keyboard shortcut Control T, and I'm going to create a table. Yes, my table has headers. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to change the name of this table to Food. OK? Now, if you noticed, if you remember what I said, this was column B, which I have a helper column in column A. And we're going to walk through how to create the formula for that. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a column. Just for right now, I'm going to call it helper. And the formula I'm going to use is equals sum tab double minus signs is number tab search. And what am I searching for? I'm searching for food, which was my table that contains right now those three items in cell B2, which is the menu item. I'm going to close my search, close my is number, close my sum, hit enter, and in this case I get a 1 because tofu is included in that. I'm going to copy that down, and now you see I get a series of zeros and ones. So let's walk through and see exactly how this works. I'm going to select this one, which has the word salad in it. And we're just going to walk through to see what happens. So in search, find text and within text. So if I highlight this search function and I hit F9, you'll see I get value 19 value. So it's searching for pork. There's nothing there, so I just get an error, a value error. Salad, it found it at character 19. And tofu, again, it wasn't in that Kalanji and Morel salad, so I got another value error. So that is the result of the search function. Now let's take away the double minus signs for a second and look at what the isNumber function does. If I hit F9, remember I had a value error 19 and a value error. So I get a false because it was not a number, true because it was a number, and then false again because the value error was not a number. By putting double minus signs in front of that, I'll hit F9, and what the double minus signs does is it converts the trues and falses 
to ones and zeros. There's actually several ways to do that. You can divide by one, you can multiply times one, you can put double minus signs. All those have the same result of converting true and false to ones and zeros. And now the sum function just adds those together and that's why I get the result of a one. And that's the case with any of these where it finds the value. Now, let's say in here I had bread and rye, notice I have a two here because it found two items, both the word rye and the word bread, so now I have a number two. So now let's go to column F and we're going to build a formula that's going to pull the data based on what I have in the helper column. We're going to start out with equals if error, so this way if any of these generate an error, I can put double quotes, which will just leave a blank there. And I'm going to use the index function. And my array and my index function is going to be the list of menu items. I'm going to lock that, comma. Now my row number, I'm going to use the small function with the if function. And my logical test is going to be if any of these items here, I'm going to lock that with F4, is greater than zero, then give me the row number of any of these items here. And again, I have to make sure I lock that. I'm going to close that parentheses. Now my K number, I'm just going to use row 1, 1. That'll generate a 1. As I copy it down, it'll generate a 2, a 3, a 4. So the first one will give me the first smallest item, the second smallest item, the third smallest item, etc., etc., as I copy it down. I'll close my small function. I have to put a minus 1 here. Now what the minus 1 does, since my data set starts in row 2, I have to subtract a 1. If it started in row 5, I'd have to subtract a 4. So keep that in mind because I find a lot of people make that error. They don't adjust that minus 1 when they're creating a formula if their data set doesn't start in row 2. And then I just put a comma, double quotes to finish off my if error function, close that parentheses, and this is an array formula. So I have to hit Control shift enter and the first thing it gives me is tofu and mushroom sushi because it found tofu in the very first item there. And when I copy this down, now my list is a tofu item, another tofu item, and a rye and bread item. So I got two and one there. That's this item right here that generated a two in my helper column. And again, I can change any of these that I want. I can change the rye to salad. And now it generated several items because there were a lot of salads in my menu item. Again, I can expand this down. And because there's a blank there, it pulls in everything. So I need to cancel that blank out. Maybe I'll put in pesto here. And it added this item here because it contained the word pesto. So that's how you can create a dynamic list based on the search of a specific list of items in Excel. So thanks for watching this tutorial. If you found it beneficial, please share it, like it, or give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my blog at my website, excel-bytes.com, or any of the social networks you see below. Have a great day, and happy excelling.